safe behind these windows and these parapets of stone Gazing at the people down below me All my life I've watched them as I hide up here alone Hungry for the histories they show me All my life I've memorized their faces Knowing them as they will never know me and I'm James Morva, and this is my picture cathedral. Ah! Victor Hugo's Notre Dame de Paris is the French author's darkest and most brilliant work. Les Miserables may be an epic masterpiece, but the novel, commonly known as The Hunchback, is a far superior, far less rambling, tighter tale about lust, about prejudice, about acceptance, with the twin towers of Notre Dame dominating the book, as they did the skyline of medieval Paris. It's a story as twisted and warped as its often purported central protagonist, and one where, and this isn't much of a spoiler, most of the characters die in horrible ways. Central to this tale, the one responsible for most of it, for Pretty much all of it, actually, is Archdeacon Claude Frollo and his ever-growing and unpriestly lust for the beautiful Esmeralda. If he can't have her, no one can. The last people you would expect to adapt this sordid tale would be the Walt Disney Company. You would also not expect it to be turned into an animated musical, yet Disney's 1996 adaptation starring Demi Moore and Tom Hulse better known for playing Mozart in Amadeus, is one of the better adaptations of the work. The film manages to retain most of the book's central themes, including Frollo's raving and his insanity-inducing and faith-conflicting lust for Esmeralda. Sadly, as in most adaptations, he's no longer a priest, but Disney still gets the point across. The song Hellfire appears at the central point of the movie, and it sums up what it took Victor Hugo an entire novel to say. Frollo wants Esmeralda, and if he can't have her, he will destroy her. This song alone, and the intensity of the performance by Tony Jay, makes Frollo one of Disney's most memorable and sinister villains. He doesn't want power, he's already got it. All he wants is the girl. And it is a very human desire. And it's this human desire, this almost relatability, which makes him one of the greatest villains. The film, like the book, speaks to anybody who has ever been derided or outcast. Anybody who has ever been called a Quasimodo outside Manchester Piccadilly. Oh look, there's Quasimodo! I'm still not over that. I'm still not over that. It speaks to every one of us who has ever been labelled ugly, and who, more often than not, feels unwanted. Quasimodo is lonely, imagining that the gargoyles at the top of Notre Dame speak to him and offer advice. Contrary to what Frollo says, they are his only friends, and we have all, I'm sure, been in his place at one point or another, wanting to join a particular group or in being forbidden from joining in. This sense is highlighted by another song, God Help the Outcasts, where Esmeralda, an outcast herself, prays to God to help the unfortunate. Esmeralda humbly asks for nothing for herself, but underneath the song is the implication that it isn't just the ugly and the deformed who are rejected and lonely, it isn't just the ugly and deformed who are rejected by society. It's the beautiful people as well. It can be, it could be, all of us. Unfortunately, this being Disney, there are a lot of changes. And the film cuts out a lot of the side characters and subplots. Gringoire, one of the few survivors of the book, and who is saved from execution by Esmeralda near the start, is absent. As is one of my favourite characters, Sister Gajul. Anyone who has read the book will know how important Gajul is to the narrative. Her hatred of Esmeralda and her frequent accusations of You ate my b 
baby being revealed to have a heart-rending twist which connects all of the main characters together. The narrative changes include the opening of the film where Frollo chases down Quasimodo's mother and attempts to drown the infant. This is completely invented for the film, but nevertheless I think it's still an interesting and exciting addition and one which I think was necessary considering a lot of the removals from the source material. It would have been nice to see Disney do a full-on, more adult, dark adaptation of the source material, but I do get the feeling they were haunted from going full-on, prevented from going full-on by the box office failure of Black Cauldron ten years earlier. However, what we do have is a movie which is entertaining, with one of Alan Menken's best scores, and which appeals to adults and children alike, as all good animation should do. For younger viewers who may not yet be ready to tackle Hugo's Hunchback, this might just be the perfect introduction to one of the classics of world literature. And then once you've seen this, go and watch the Charles Lawton one because that's all over this one.